wellness community has long been on the forefront of the unconventional. There's absolutely nothing wrong with liking crystals. However, crystals curing cancer, where's the science behind that? And the unease of the pandemic created mass anxiety and a quest for answers. People I knew, friends, colleagues, other yoga teachers, were starting to jump on the bandwagon of these conspiracy theories. That feels like the real pandemic for me. A world that used to be so safe and trustable is now infiltrated with extremity. So because our government tells us this boogeyman out there is going to get you if you are close to another human being, that we all go along with this. We're for freedom of choice to choose what resonates with you, not what resonates with the mainstream media, not what resonates with whatever source that, that wants to tell you how to live your life. Now, perceptions molded online are driving some in the yoga and wellness space to turn their real worlds upside down. Think Truman Show. Basically, the algorithms can feed you with content that is based upon your own fantasy and your own desire, not just from someone's own browsing history, but based upon any subtle data that can be gathered about them. Potentially at my peril. Oh, there's no question about it. This is the very first class wow. back in person. I'm so excited after everything that we've been through. It's kind of a whole yeah. new world that you're walking in. It is a whole new world. It's like, what is it going to be now? And how are we going to practice? How are we going to be together? Let yourself sink down into the earth. Susanna Barkataki is a yoga teacher to her class here in Los Angeles and a yoga culture advocate to her nearly 69,000 followers on Instagram. She says as the pandemic unfolded, her community's approach to well-being drove many to search for information beyond the official sources. People in the yoga and wellness world, we are very open. And we're often interested in finding alternative kinds of health benefits or ways to get to health that are different than what's told to us by the mainstream. Would you say that the community is home to people who are sort of anti-science? It certainly became that way. I don't necessarily think people were anti-science to begin with, but with this upswelling really of conspiracy theories, that were anti-government um, and then also had questions about whether the government was protecting our wellness or not, they slid into being anti-science, into following kind of pure groupthink that was non-factual, not checked out, but just based in hearsay. And so that very quickly turned people who before maybe had propensities to want to eat healthily or eat organic food, um, not take shots if they didn't have to, turn those folks into people who are questioning um, the scientific authority that up to that point, I think they wouldn't have questioned. So what we will create right now is an experience that even if you open your eyes, you will be with yourself. Why are you here in Tulum now? I'm here in Tulum because it called me and I was just at a place in California where I felt constricted and I wanted to come live my life and enjoy the sunshine and be in a spiritual community and in a bikini. <laughs> Nina Camille is a yoga instructor and Instagram influencer. Six months prior to our interview, amidst the pandemic, she relocated from California to Tulum, Mexico. Yeah, I was living in San Diego and just some of the, the in and out restrictions, it 
was just kind of taxing on my nervous system. Oh, so it was specifically COVID that brought you here? That was definitely a large part of it. Uh -huh. It was just getting to the point where I'm like, what are we doing here? Like, are we in, are we out? Can we hug, can we not? Yeah. When do I need to wear this mask? When do I not? And I'm just getting really tired of it, to yeah. be honest. Yeah. And I knew Tulum was thriving and there was ecstatic dance and life happening. And that's what I wanted to be a part of, so. What did you find? There were pretty much no restrictions here whatsoever. You have to wear a mask if you wanna go into a bank or a major grocery store or the doctor's office, but restaurants, yoga studios, community spaces, you name it. I mean, it was like nothing ever happened here. And when you arrived, like who, who else was coming here? Literally everyone was coming here when I arrived. I mean, I think I've met up with probably 30 or 40 of my friends from the States in the last six months here. Wow. Yeah, I stayed for six months because people just keep coming. Between December 2020 and January 2021, more U.S. tourists came to this region of Mexico than at the same time the previous year, pre-pandemic, accounting for 90% of the foreign tours here. And nearly everyone we interviewed for this story said they had seen people in the yoga and wellness community move abroad or to other U.S. states with looser COVID public health policies. It'll be lovely to meet with Asia and Salpi today too for our Women's Health Institute update. Anusha Wijie Kumar is the founder of the holistic wellness organization Shanti Within. She also leads meditation classes for cancer patients as the wellness consultant at Hoke Hospital in Southern California. An important union, she says, of wellness and established science. Does yoga itself, or at least the, let's say the Americanized version of, of yoga as we know. Is it predisposed to being a place where anti-science and conspiracies can flourish? Yes, the answer to that is absolutely. Because in many ways, yoga and wellness has a be become a place of anti-science. So just some quick examples. People peddling the juice cleanse that that is going to solve all of your problems. I mean, we see the fat shaming, the rise of the toxic diet culture in yoga and wellness. We also see the love of crystals. I love a crystal, Adam. There's absolutely nothing wrong with liking crystals. However, crystals curing cancer, where's the science behind mm -hmm. that? So talk about what, what has happened in the last year when it comes to misinformation in not only yoga circles, but in the larger wellness circles. I was reading a really interesting article which was talking about QAnon and I think they said that one in six Americans believes in one of the conspiracy theories related to QAnon and we see that compounding in yoga and wellness over the past year and a lot of that was to do with the pandemic so we what we've seen certainly in the community that I live in in Orange County and in yoga and wellness is the anti-vaccination group that is now joining with that right wing kind of fundamentalist element to be anti-black lives, to be anti-vaccination, to be anti-science. And we've seen this specifically in yoga and wellness spaces, not just in Orange County, Adam, but around America and around the world. And that's really concerning because I don't think people were really aware of how much the yoga and wellness space became a hotbed for the spreading of this misinformation. We're in a real conundrum because there is suspicion and distrust of almost everything, except one's own tailored, targeted, personalized world. Ramesh Srinivasan studies the intersection of tech, politics, and societies. He says the ways in which social media platforms polarize communities may be more powerful than users realize. So, you know, if I'm somebody, let's say, you know, I'm, I'm sort of in the, in the wellness world and I'm, I've got my anxieties and fears about, about you know, my own health and, and, and COVID and whatnot, how might my suspicions be reinforced? And could that shape how I act? Without question. So if I have a certain anxiety about you know, um, the vac uh, different vaccines or, you know, Dr. Fauci, for example, 
those anxieties are extremely likely to be reinforced and I would also say amplified, like just made worse, more severe. And the best way to feed someone's anxieties is to not just echo what their existing anxiety is, but to reinforce it with something worse, something a little more hardcore. So you're really being dragged down the rabbit hole. It's a rabbit hole and this is something I've seen personally. There are lots of people who came specifically because they wanted to, you know, as you did in part, to evade COVID restrictions, but also because they, you know, were firmly sort of anti-science, right? COVID isn't real. We want to escape this heavy-handedness of the government. Do you worry that Tulum is becoming, has become a place where these ideas fester and are fostered. And I have seen that. And I can smell those groups from a mile away. I can walk into anywhere and be like, oh yeah, nope. I'm not interested in engaging with those people because it's extreme and I just don't have the energy for it. Do you see conspiracy theories creeping into, seeping into the yoga and wellness community? Oh my gosh, yes. That feels like the real pandemic for me. Yeah, it's, it's really sad and exhausting because a world that used to be so safe and trustable is now infiltrated with extremity and this like polarized energy. So yeah, I absolutely have seen that big time and it sucks. I've had friends leave their yoga studios, quit their jobs, like have to withdraw completely because their entire yoga studio and spiritual community there got so embedded in all of the QAnon stuff that it mm -hmm. became this like sick place. And yeah, it, it's been really sad to see and super disappointing because <laughs> it's almost like those of us who are still here on the earth and connected to reality, have to like defend almost where I'm like, oh no, no, no. Yeah, I am a yoga teacher and a coach and a healer and I'm an intelligent human being <laughs> where I don't feel like that was the case before. Mm -hmm. So do you recall like when you started seeing the first signs of QAnon and conspiracy kind of working their way into the community? I do. It was so fascinating because they were using words that spoke to me and people like me. They were saying phrases and hashtags like, where we go when we go all, right? That's wow. like, okay, yeah, that sounds very yogic, right? Where uh -huh. we go when we go all, or the great awakening. I mean, that's samadhi, that's mm. enlightenment. Where we go one, we go all. And promises of the great awakening stem from the QAnon conspiracy theory. QAnon started as a fringe movement its believers falsely alleging the country is run by a cabal of Satan-worshipping pedophiles and that former President Trump would restore it to greatness. Save the Children was another big one that really, I think, was when it started to move through yoga and wellness communities. That also caught my attention because I thought, well, this is really important. This matches my values. If, you know, mainstream media has started to be seen as elitist, if alternative media has gotten more and more fringe and if, all of, and if all of it has spilled over into social media, things have just become fragmented. As tech companies build products to keep users on their platforms, Srinivasan says their behavior modifying algorithms are having profoundly manipulative effects, not just on people's digital habits, but also on their perception of reality. Partly what these algorithms are feeding you are based upon what they can determine are your own desires. You know, if your desire is to escape, I got to get away from this pandemic. This is such a bummer. This is the control, you know, of the state upon me. If that is known about you, you are going to be fed with content that allows that desire to be in your mind further realized. Even if that desire has nothing to do with the actual reality of this pandemic, that all of us were dealing with. So it, the algorithms can create a false reality of your dreams. Think Truman Show, you know? Basically the algorithms can feed you with content that is based upon your own fantasy and your own desire. And that is really gleaned not just from someone's own browsing history, 
but based upon you know, any subtle data that can be gathered about them. Potentially at my peril. Oh, there's no question about it. Stuff on. Don't worry about your hair, Goldilocks. Let's do it. All right, guys, my name's Dr. Cordy Williams, and we are coming in hot. Cordy Williams is a former Marine turned chiropractor who founded the Health From Within Family Wellness Center and the organization 1776 Forever Free. What I know is when they come for my kids with this non-tested COVID vaccine, I'm going to give them an insurance policy courtesy of Glock on their forehead, okay? And I don't want to do that, guys. I'm, I'm not inciting violence, but what I am inciting is resolve. Like, who do these people think they are? But I know, I know it's all part of the agenda. I know that it's Crystal Tini is an entrepreneur, actress, and wellness influencer with more than 166,000 followers on Instagram. Are all of us around the world, in our country, just supposed to lay down and die at the expense of a virus that is not a pandemic by any means? If you don't realize yet that you are being lied to about the numbers, about how you're catching it, about all of this, you need to seriously research and research now. With the current tyranny we're under with the masking the last 15 months, Crystal, you and I have to encourage other influencers to teach flag etiquette. So Cordy and Crystal are uh, here recording their uh, weekly podcast, which they say is all about restoring the health and spiritual freedoms that Americans once enjoyed but no longer do. When I'm on a plane now and I see a kid wearing a facial condom, I just, I just, you, you know, my kids, it's, it, it's been hard the last 15 months. We want everybody to have choice. The show is really based on really getting out to the general public where that's being restricted. And silenced. I mean, we can just go into the whole mask thing and everything like that. Like, you know, a lot of us just believe that's symbolism for silencing people. Um, and that is, you know, we're for just what he's saying is just freedom of choice. It's just choose what resonates with you. Mm -hmm. Not what resonates with the mainstream media, not what resonates with whatever source that, that wants to, you know, tell you just how to live your life. You just want to be able to choose. Healing, yoga, things that are good for the body, the mind, and the soul. I want to start branching out and giving more information to people that don't have it. Pre-pandemic, Teeny's Instagram feed was filled with photos and videos on yoga, manifesting, and nutrition. But days after the World Health Organization officially declared the pandemic, she started posting the QAnon-related hashtags, but says she's not an advocate for the conspiracy theory. I never actively spoke about QAnon and the whole movement. Um, and, you know, I use the hashtags where we go one, we go all, because I truly believe that where we go one, we all go, we all go there. And um, there's just been a lot of things that I believe are truly evil that have happened to people and much like myself, that we're censored. We are not allowed to speak our truth. During our interview, Tini pulled up a study she saw online that refuted the science that masks were an effective measure against the spread of COVID-19. There's a table, uh, physiological effects, hypoxia, hypercapnia, shortness of breath, uh, decline in pH levels, acidosis, toxicity, inflammation, self-contamination, um, increase in stress hormone levels, increased muscle tension. This is a, a table from the NIH website, from mask wearing. So this is not something that we just came up with ourselves and was like, this isn't good for you. The article Teeny cites was retracted from the journal it was published in for several reasons, including misquotes, unverified data, and speculative statements. The overwhelming consensus of the scientific community is that masking at the community level is safe and beneficial, including some investigations that show masking reduces COVID-19 infections by 70 to 79%. If these algorithms are being used to kind of further a certain kind of escapist desire that one has, they're gonna be further and further removed from the medical or biological like truth or the, you know, the public health truth of this situation which can put you at much greater risk. No question it could put you at much greater risk because no longer are you gonna be willing to take any medical advice at that point. And these can be people who are well-informed, 
well-educated. Oh, without question. Some of them have medical degrees that I've met. But they have questions. Again, they have a legit, I, you know. It, it all legit. starts somewhere. In this 24-hour information cycle, we're getting drips and drabs of information and quick to make decisions and quick to make um, sometimes policy decisions based on what we think we know at this very moment, right? And science is a very sort of a messy, complicated thing. But because we've had a front row seat to it, there have been so many opportunities for all of us to have doubts about, oh, I, don't, I don't know about this particular finding or this policy decision because of you know, whatever we think we know at the very moment. You know, in this day and age, we all live in information silos, right? We may watch certain news channels or most likely our social media feeds are very, very curated based on our political beliefs. Do you think that it's possible that you may exist in your own silo reinforcing what you already believe? Well, I want to be very careful about how I answer that question because what I don't want to happen is where it gets clipped in any sort of way where it might paint me as an individual that does that because I certainly don't. Um, uh, you know, of course, that, 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 that question you pose, it, it, it is possible. What I think is more probable, though, is that people are kind of locked in this mindset where they've been taught to accept what the media says, yeah. to accept what the medical doctors say. There's so much information that is out there, but we're only supposed to believe whatever is on the news without being able to question things. There's a lot that I don't know. I have no problem admitting that. I have no problem admitting that. I live in an information silo that I constantly have to challenge myself to break out of, right? So the algorithms think that this is who, who, who Adam is, this is the kind of information we should feed him so that he continues to you know, click, 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 click. What I also know about myself is that I am not a science guy. And so I don't try to make medical decisions for myself. Now, I, I do a lot of reading, and that reading might be curated by the algorithm, but I try my best to sort of look at reliable sources. And oftentimes those reliable sources, and I have no problem admitting, are the ones being reported on by the mainstream media that says this is the vetted science and this is you know, the pseudoscience, the fringe science, or the discredited science, and what have you. What does that make me? So let me ask you a question. Okay. Wait, just, just answer this for me. Well, what I'm does that make me? Am I a lemming? Am I, am I sheep? No, am no, I'm I'm gonna answer stupid? it a different way. I'm, I'm gonna answer it a different way. Here's how I'm gonna answer it. When do you, as, as an individual, lose the ability to trust a government official, a clinician, a physician? How many chances do they get to lose your trust where then you say, hey, I'm going to take responsibility for my health, and I'm going to look at what the research says about what I should do or not do? Recent data showed that states with the highest vaccination rates had the lowest number of new cases per capita. But in states with comparatively lower vaccination rates, hospitals are overwhelmed and cases are rising. What you term a propensity seems even more that this community was particularly primed to take this on because, not just because of the idea that, you know, these. Um, many members of this community are very attuned to health and wellness, but also that that tinge of anti-authority mm -hmm. that's here. Yes, absolutely. Anti-authority, individualism, belief in the individual, and I mean, there are also motives that maybe aren't so pure because the wellness industry actually did triple the amount of growth that the pharmaceutical industry had done in the last three years up until the point you know that that COVID happened and so many of these yoga practitioners and wellness practitioners stood to benefit financially a great amount if they could say oh don't take a shot but this supplement right. and these food products I sell will help you stay healthy. Is yoga a little bit of a gateway into the rabbit hole? I would say, Adam, absolutely now. It really has become the gateway to, you're not sure, I'm not surprised by anything that's happening in yoga and wellness anymore. The past year has really illustrated to me the levels of the rabbit hole that you mentioned and how there is so much misinformation. And I see a lot of the whoever it is filming something in their bedroom and then putting it on YouTube or building a website 
zero credentials, not rooted in science, and then people citing said YouTube video, said website as fact. How big a problem is all of this? It's a big problem. It's a big problem that we urgently need to address, and that's going to take every single one of us. We can't sit on the sidelines any longer. We might think that, yeah, we have an unease with our use of technology. Yeah, it's addictive. That's not sufficient enough of a criticism of this problem because technology is not about technology. Technology has become the gateway and the language that basically mediates all of our experiences. So how I think of my own body is now technologically mediated. How I think about, you know, my country is technologically mediated. Hey, thanks for checking out CBS and Originals on YouTube. If you want to watch more documentaries, download the free CBS News app on your phone, tablet, smart TV, or any streaming device. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking down here. Thanks for watching.